11.4 is polar coordinates. In polar coordinates, we're going to learn a different way to write things, but all the ideas from trigonometry are all going to apply here. And the way we're going to measure on polar coordinates, uh, just like regular coordinates, there's going to be uh, two numbers. So we'll talk about notation first. Now notation for any coordinates is going to look like this, and it's going to be a number and another number. Uh, before it was x, y. So this notation was uh, Cartesian or rectangular. Or rectangular. And the way we measured, you go over some amount x, go up some amount y, and then the point you were describing will be x comma y. So one of them was how far to go right, the other one's how far to go up. Uh, so this is rectangular. And now we're going to get into polar coordinates. We're still going to use rectangular coordinates, but generally it's going to be to convert from rectangular to polar or convert from polar to rectangular. So rectangular coordinates are still important, uh, but we're not going to go over uh, much review on rectangular coordinates. Polar coordinates, we could have the same point, except we're going to measure it in a very different way. So we could have the exact same point, but we're going to give it a different name. And the way we're going to measure it We have a th angle theta, and we have some distance from the origin we're going to call uh, a radius or r. So our notation looks just like regular coordinates, except the first number is a radius, the second number is an angle. So this is the way polar coordinate notation works. And just like before, r is the radius. Theta is the angle, just the way we measured before, positive starting, uh, starting at the positive x-axis, going uh, counterclockwise. So before we do anything else, we're going to plot a couple points, just for practice. And we'll be plotting a few different points, so I'll give these points names. So point A, we're going to stick to radian measures. Next point, negative 7, 3 pi over 2. Point C will be negative 5, 0. And point D will be 10, negative 5, pi over 4. So I'm going to really quickly put up a graph paper here. Not necessary, but it will help out trying to make this a little more accurate. Better go to a smaller grid if I want to squeeze all this in. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to plot these out. And we'll go alphabetically. So A is first, so we're going to go. It's a bit strange. You. If I read this, I would read it as 3, comma, pi over 4. But the way we're going to plot them, we're going to think about the angle first. And then that will get us our direction. And then we're going to basically walk three steps or go three units in that direction. So where's pi over 4? Pi over 4 is an angle right here. It also goes the other direction. So this is pi over 4. I'm going to put all the points on the same graph, so I'm not going to leave this measurement up, but pi over 4 is halfway between uh, quadrant 1 and 2, also known as 45 degrees. I'll try to do this as accurate as I can. There we go. That's a little better. Now I need to count off three units in this direction. This is incorrect. This is more than three units. Uh, each of these right here is not one. That would be, if I measure that carefully, each little square is one 
by one. So if we use a little Pythagorean theorem, the hypotenuse would be square root two, uh, which is about 1.41. So this, we'd be going too far right there. So we're gonna go probably about right there. Another way to test this, if I was going actually directly to the right three units, I'd stop right there and just think about uh, forming a circle and where that circle intersects that line, that's where my point should be. So I marked off three and three, so that point really is right about there. So again, we measure the angle, or try to be as careful as we could with the angle, and then we'll go three units that direction. So that is A. Now I'm going to go to B. B is 3 pi over 2. We're looking at the angle first. 3 pi over 2 is way down to here. So we're going straight down now. But now something weird is happening. Negative 7. So normally I'd be thinking about going straight down. But now negative 7 means go backwards that direction. So I'm actually going to go up 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's right at the top there. And that will be point B. So our angle was pointing directly downwards on the negative y-axis, but we were supposed to go negative 7 that direction. So that actually means we go directly up. Now we're getting into point C. Point C has a weird angle. Well, where is the angle zero? The angle zero goes right along the positive x-axis right here. So there's the angle zero. And I need to walk negative five units to the right. So that is one, two, three, four, five. And this is point C. So it's a little strange. Again, our angle was directly to the right, but then we went negative five units to the right, also known as five units left. And last up, D. Now, this is a little strange. Our angle is negative. So we're going to carefully think about that angle. We're going to go counter or clockwise now. Negative five pi over four. If we go halfway, that's four pi over four and another pi over four. So we're going to be halfway up in this direction. And I need to go 10 units out here. So it's pretty far. Exactly how far is 10? Well, you could try to be very accurate. You could count over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then do your best to, if you have a uh, protractor, you can be a little more accurate. and. We want to try to rotate this up. I can do a better job. Something like that, right there. So we'll call that, that'll be about 10 units right there. And this point is labeled D. So again, we counted out 10 here and then did our best to figure out where that would rotate to. Another way to think about it, if I rotated D downwards, hopefully it would land on 10. All right, so there's our four points we plotted. We dealt with some negative angles and some negative radii. Now we're gonna do is look at the relationship between polar and rectangular coordinates. And we're going to generate the formulas to convert. Now, you've already seen all these before. So everything I tell you here should be uh, somewhat of a review. So we have a point here. We could measure with R and theta. We also could measure with X and Y. So there's two different ways to measure. 
and we just got through an entire chapter on how to relate x, y, r, and theta. So here we go. Let's do Pythagorean theorem first. x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So you probably knew that one before you got here, Pythagorean theorem. Now we're going to go with the three trig relationships. We'll go with uh, cosine first. Cosine is uh, adjacent over hypotenuse, x over r. And sine, really similar, except it's opposite, over hypotenuse. And last, well, there are three more trig functions you could write down, but um, they're not going to be as useful as these. So tangent is y over x. So these are our four relationships right here. And usually you're gonna, going to uh, want rectangular on one side and polar on the other. So what I mean is on the right side of this equation, we have uh, both a rectangular coordinate x and a polar coordinate r. So let's straighten these out a little bit. The first equation's already in a nice form. I'm just going to copy that one down. Now all the trig, let's put the uh, rectangular on the left. So I'm going to multiply by x and no, multiply by r. There we go. So x equals r cos theta, y equals r sine theta, and y over x equals tan theta. So these are uh, the four equations to relate polar and rectangular coordinates. And we're going to do some conversions now.